everybody. Thanks a lot for attending uh, this talk. And uh, I want to thank the ICTP for giving me this uh, opportunity to be here and to present. Uh, this talk uh, entitled Phase Field Model for Immiscible to Phase Flow in a Microfluidic Junction. When we put uh, two uh, immiscible fluids in a junction, uh, what are the kind of pattern that can happen? This work actually is done in collaboration between the National Engineering School of Sfax and the Indian Institute of Technology of Opera in India. And it will be presented by me, Zahid al Hafsi, and uh, that's what supervised the, by both Professor Manoranjan Mishra from the Indian side and uh, Professor Samuel Oud from the Tunisian side also. So quickly to the outlines of this, uh, of this uh, presentation, we'll start by an introduction talking about uh, the microfluidics, and then we will try to, uh, uh, to talk about application of two-phase flow in microfluidics, why we are talking about these kind of things. Then we'll present our mathematical model, the two-phase flow phase field model, which is built uh, by the Navier-Stokes equations and the Kahn-Hilliard equations, which, he, which is the basic equation for the phase field model. Then we'll give some uh, numerical simulations result. We'll start by the T-junction to validate the work with the previous uh, works, and then we'll present some uh, results also related to the to an H junction. Of course, we will conclude. As an introduction, the junction shape may have a different and different topologies. Uh, we can uh, talk about uh, Y shape, T, uh, T shape, uh, P shape, H shape. And in this study, we will uh, focus on T uh, shape or T junction shape or, and uh, H junction shape. The objective of this study actually is to follow up the flow of two immiscible fluids when we put two immiscible fluids across a microfluidic junction, what are the possible patterns that can uh, happen and what are uh, the phenomena that, that uh, can be seen. And we'll highlight the capability of the phase field method to capture the interface evolution compared to uh, some previous uh, method. And uh, we'll discuss the different observed pattern and we'll compare with the previous uh, findings. The two phase flow in microfluidics and its different applications, you can encounter this kind of uh, flow in encapsulation uh, industry for foods, drugs, chemical products, uh, in chemical reaction and biochemical assays, separation ch chemistry uh, like chromatography, uh, droplet generation and manipulation, and we'll see this kind of droplets, biomedicine and material synthesis. Also, there are uh, the current uh, other applications. For the mathematical model, we will talk about immiscible uh, fluid flow. What does it mean, immiscible fluid flow? It means that we can see a limiting interface between the fluid. It will be observed uh, along the simulation. And to follow, up, to follow up the flow pattern, we have to focus on the variation or the geometrical variation of this interface. It will give us an idea about uh, the flow pattern that happens. So what we'll use actually is a laminar fluid flow. Laminar fluid flow can be solved using Navier-Stokes equation for momentum and mass conservation. That will give us uh, an idea about uh, the pressure and the velocity of the fluid. But we want to track the interface. That means we want to see the different patterns that happen. That means we need an interface tracking method as well, like volume fluid method, level set, or phase field. For our uh, case, we'll use the phase field method. So our model is built. Proposal on Navier Stokes equation, the two equations of momentum and uh, mass conservation. We'll not talk about energy equation because we'll assume an isothermal uh, flow. And we'll use uh, the phase field model to build our numerical scheme. These equations will be solved using the ComSol Multiphysics 5.2 software. It's a finite element uh, based software. And there is a model inside this ComSol uh, called laminar two phase flow phase field model and we'll, uh, module, and we'll uh, use it. Well, uh, quickly, the equation is for immiscible, incompressible, isothermal, liquid, liquid flow. We have navier stokes equations, the conservation of mass and the conservation of momentum. And then we'll add the interface tracking method, the phase field method, which is based on the Kahn-Hilliard equation for time evolution of a diffuse interface profile. Actually, the coupling between these uh, the set of equation of Navier Stokes and the phase field model is, do, is uh, doing via the uh, surface tension force, the FST. As the FST is expressed as function of the phi, the order parameter, is the chemical potential time the derivative of the order parameter phi. So what is the order parameter? This order parameter actually is the phase field parameter or the order parameter phi is a parameter that we, we introduce to describe the transition between fluid one and fluid two. Actually, 
phase field method, it is a diffuse interface method. Why it is diffuse interface method? Because in reality, when you put two immiscible fill with fill with one and fill with two, a sharp interface is seen between them. That means if we will uh, go from fill with one to fill with two, the transition will be abrupt from row one to row two. But this is uh, uh, not very useful uh, numerically. So we assume a diffuse interface model. We assume that there is, there is a small interface between the two fill with at which there is a little bit of diffusing in order to ensure a smooth in, uh, the smoothness of the, of the transition between fill with one to fill with two. So we are assumed that to go from fill with one for to fill with two, we are going smoothly. So using uh, this uh, representation, we'll be able to solve our model. And instead of using uh, row one and row two, we are using just the phase field parameter phi it's a global parameter that gives a description of the whole system. If phi is equal to minus one, we are in field with one. If phi is equal to one, we are in field with uh, two. And uh, between them, all values are uh, between uh, minus one and one are describing the diffuse uh, interface. And we are giving a small thickness epsilon to the interface we assume between the two fluids. Actually, the diffuse interface approach allows us to do what? Allows us to analyze the two, the two fluid system as one uh, fluid flow, as we are having just one fluid flow with a density rho and uh, a viscosity mu. And they are given by these uh, relations. They see the full description. Actually, if we will <coughs> put phi equal to minus one, we will be back to rho equal to rho one. And if we will uh, we'll put phi equal to one, we will be back to rho equal to rho two. So this, uh, these uh, expressions are giving uh, a general description to the system via the phase field method. We are not talking about fill with one and fill with two. We are talking about uh, a system of uh, as, as we have one, uh, one fill with flow. And this is very, very useful numerically. Actually, for the numerical simulation, what will be done is uh, the following. Uh, we will uh, focus on uh, a reference model first. So this is the experimental numerical works of uh, Chiva Kumari di Cirlu and uh, uh, his co-authors in 2010, what, what they did actually, they are putting two immiscible fluids, they are putting water and uh, kerosene. They are injecting water from the top and kerosene from the bottom in a T-junction. And uh, the pattern they have uh, found are they, are, they have found some uh, bubbles and some slugs and stratified uh, flow and a uh, little bit wavy also. And here are uh, some slugs. This is experimentally and this is done numerically via the volume of fluid method. These are, this is the previous work of uh, Cirlo et al. Actually, what uh, Cirlo has done is the following. They, ha they are having a T-junction. Initially, the T-junction is full of air. Then they are injecting water from the top, kerosene from the bottom. Water and kerosene are flowing. They are pushing out the air uh, out of the junction. There, there will be uh, some uh, patterns that are formed between water and kerosene. These the patterns we have, uh, we have seen, this kind of uh, pattern, sorry, yes. This is the red one is the water, the blue one is the kerosene, and we have some slugs there, uh, here, and here there are slugs detachment and this kind of, of things. But what we will do is a uh, little bit different, because Cherlo model actually it is a three-phase uh, flow system model, because we have, we have the air, water, and kerosene. What we assume is that because of uh, kerosene and water will push out the air. So we start by, by uh, filling the domain by uh, water and kerosene. That means at t equal to zero for our model, the initially, initially the domain is half filled by uh, filled with one water in the top and filled with two kerosene in the bottom at rest. Then we will apply a velocity to the water and a velocity to the kerosene. This is the 3D model. We are simplifying the 3D model to a 2D model. Actually, what we have here, a water inlet, kerosene inlet, and the outlet. For the simulation parameter at the first uh, stage, we are taking the same uh, value of uh, Shirley et al. And uh, for the boundary condition, we have a constant inlet velocity and uh, a constant pressure outlet, the atmospheric pressure. Wetted wall condition also is assumed in the boundary wall. Well, this is a snapshot of the laminar two-phase flow model of, of COMSOL multiphysics. It's just a snapshot, not uh, very important. 
So what we did actually is if we triangle our fine mesh, and this is our base state, this is at t equal to zero. We are filling the junction half filled with water, the blue one, and Q then the red one. Then we will uh, apply a velocity from this side and the same velocity value from, from this side. The simulation will be done or will be run in one second. What are the different uh, patterns that we have observed? The disturbance, there is a non set of disturbance that starts at t equal to zero, zero, five seconds. What we see actually is stratified flow plus onset of instability. There is some stratification and there is kind of instability that occur here. This is starting of wavy flow. Here we can see the wavy flow and there is starting of slag detachment. The slag will be, there will be slag detachment here. Here we can see. And then these are the slags. T equal to oh, 25 seconds. We can see the slags here. See the transition between the wavy and slag uh, flow, and then fully slag flow is uh, is seen as uh, uh, Shirley has uh, has found also. So starting uh, from t equal to uh, zero zero three seconds, the transition between wavy and slag flow is completed, and the flow is fully slag. This is the permanent established regime. It's a permanent uh, slag flow. This is the first uh, simulation result. But we'll try to go a little bit further, and we'll try to see the effect of uh, gradient of velocity. If the, if both fluids are not uh, are not having the same velocity, so here is the same velocity. That means the previous result. Here is the case when we are uh, giving uh, water, uh, let's say, uh, a greater velocity than kerosene. So we can see that the slugs of water are uh, much more larger than that of kerosene. And inversely, of course, if we will give uh, velocity of kerosene greater than that of water, the slugs of kerosene are much more large. So we can see, we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can say that slug dimension is proportional to the inert velocity. This is a first observation that we can, that we can uh, take. So here we have an animation. I don't know if it will uh, work or not. Just so. <laughs> oh, not so anyway, well this, uh, this uh, animation is uh, showing the slag detachment and uh, how the slag formations uh, are, uh, can be seen. We are not able to see this. But, but for the H junction. So we did the, the T junction model just to compare with uh, Cherlo's uh, work. So, and we will try to, uh, to see what can happen in a H junction. Actually, I zoom in an H junction. Here are the same parameter almost of the T junction. Just we have, we have here, sorry, two outlets. We are injecting water from the top here and from the bottom, and we have uh, two outlets. That means the flow has the possibility to go here and there. The same velocity here, free triangular uh, fine mesh. What are the patterns that we can observe? Here we'll focus on the effect of the surface tension. That means we, are, we run our model with surface tension and without surface tension. With surface tension, where we can see the permanent regime is the slag flow. Slags are there. Then in the outlet, or in the, in the outlet of the horizontal channel, a subdivision of slags is uh, seen. This is uh, similar to the previous uh, work of in a T-junction. But without surface tension, uh, a new pattern is observed. We are observing bubbles. Bubbles are there. We have a stratified flow and uh, a bubbling uh, phenomena. And we'll try to focus on these uh, bubbles, uh, uh, let's say, how these bubbles are, uh, are formed. Actually, giving a velocity to kerosene and a velocity to the uh, water, sorry, red, and kerosene in the blue, at initial contact between the two fluids, bubbles occur and uh, Bubbles are pushing out to the channel, let's see here, are pushing out by the stratified flow. That means the bubbling phenomenon is, is just a transition phenomenon. So it's pushing out, then it's pushing out. So we have seen this stratified flow, bubbly flow, and some vertical slag flow. If the bubbles are going out, they are coming, they become some slags and they go. Actually, and then finally we, we have the disappearance of the, of the disturbance. That means the bubbling phenomenon is just transition and we will uh, finally, we will find the stratified flow established again. And this is the final shape, this one at zero three, three one. F water is pushing from uh, the top 
going out from the top till then from the bottom going out from the bottom and it is the permanent state for the H junction without surface tension effect. This is just to discuss the bubbling phenomenon. Uh, finally, just uh, we have, uh, we will see the effect of the gradient of velocity, same as we did in T-junction. Yes, it's the almost <laughs> the last one. <laughs> well, if we are injecting water with a greater velocity than that of kerosene, here due to the mass conservation uh, equation normally, water will, go, will go exit from the top and also from the bottom of junction. We are injecting water from the top, but you can see that it, uh, due to the gradient of velocity and because of uh, water is very fast or twice faster than kerosene, so it allows it to uh, exit also from uh, the bottom of, uh, of the channel. Actually, this is almost all. Just to, to conclude, well, uh, we are uh, seeing that the phase field uh, method is capable to capture some the flow regime in microfluidic junction. Actually, the accuracy of the results are well depending on the interface thickness parameter epsilon that we, are, uh, that we assume between the two. Uh, fluid, uh, the surface tension effect between the two, the two emissible fluid is, on, is, an onset of, uh, is responsible for the onset of insta instability. Uh, what are the same, actually no, no uh, important thing to say. Uh, just for complementary physics, there is another model called a ternary phase field model. We are not using it. Maybe you can use it uh, in, in coming up. Uh, some references are there. Uh, just uh, to thank Professor Manoran Jan Mishra from Indian Institute of Technology, Europa, and Professor Sam Lord from the Mechanics Engineering Department in National Engineering School of Fax, Tunisia, and I have to acknowledge the National Engineering School of Fax, the Indian Institute of Technology, the NAM Center for a Fellowship I have uh, uh, obtained in New Delhi, India, and of course the ICTP for this great opportunity. Thanks for, thank you all. <laughs> I wish to be a doctor as well. So you mentioned something really six times more than the capillary pressure if you take the diameter of the uh, tube. So it should be totally uh, defined by capillary forces. So when you see your flat, mm -hmm. it should be something like rounded shape. So you should see many. Mm -hmm. Uh, due to due to the capillary forces. Yes. Well, actually. Actually, what uh, what we have seen is that the bubbling here, because we are assuming a wet stability. So. Uh, yes, this. The surface tension. Well, it's almost included in the in the model itself here. Because this model, all these the, these sets of equations and this one, the Canellier equation, that gives the relationship between the the surface tension force and the phi parameter. The phi parameter is the is the parameter that uh, distinguish the two phases. Actually, seeing a bubble uh, means that there is a difference of phase. Phase one is bubbling here, and the phase two, is a, there, there is no bubble. That means the surface tension force, and this is the, the key equation, uh, I, can, I, I can say, because it's coupling the model, the Navier-Stokes equation, with the phase field. And the, all these models are included in Comsol multiphysics. That's why I, I, I was putting that uh, snapshot. I was going to quickly. But you can, you can see here. These are in the more in the, the Comsol metaphysics itself, we have Navier Stokes equation, and this one is the Canellier equation. Well, the snapshot is not well determined, but you can see that the, uh, the, the surface tension force is related to the thing. Any other short questions? Please? If not, let's thank you. Thank you. Thank you.